When you first embark on your music making journey, you will come across many new terms that will bring you great confusion. Picking out your first keyboard can be a tedious task if you don't know what it is you're looking for. Hey guys, my name is Jade Wee, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the main differences between a synthesizer and a MIDI controller. So funny story, my first piece of hardware was actually the Arturia Beatstep Pro. I watched a bunch of videos by Nick Bat from Sonic State, and you know, he had other stuff on the table, but whatever, I was focused on the Beatstep Pro. I get home, I'm super excited, I unbox it, I plug it in, I turn it on, and then I'm like, wait, this thing doesn't make any sounds. It's funny to look at it now and laugh. Back then, I wish that the person in the music store would have explained things a little better, but as sad it is to say, you can't really depend on a lot of music store employees to be knowledgeable about all this hardware stuff. This is something that you kind of have to teach yourself. So I wanted to make this super beginner friendly video on this subject and hopefully it'll help somebody out. Quick shout out to our sponsor, DistroKid, the easiest and fastest way to get your music on all the major platforms. Use the code below and get 7% off your first year membership. Number one, MIDI controllers don't make any sounds. It's all in the name, controller. They're meant to control something. It's also important to note that not all MIDI controllers are created equal. For the past decade or so, manufacturers slowly stopped adding 5-pin MIDI to their MIDI controllers. This was mainly because virtual instruments kind of took over the music making industry. People went from racks of gear to a laptop, VSTs, and a MIDI controller. This is still a very acceptable and powerful setup, but there's just something about having a real instrument that makes the music making process more enjoyable. An easy way to tell which type of keyboard you have is to look at the back of it. On synths, you'll find an audio out. That's how you get sound out of your keyboard into your interface or mixer. MIDI controllers don't have an audio out because again, MIDI controllers make no sound. You'll sometimes find a sustain input on them though, which is useful. Pick up a sustain pedal and you got yourself a tiny piano. Fast forward to today and synthesizers are more popular than ever and companies are slowly starting to add 5 pin as the standard again, alongside USB, which is great news. So let's talk MIDI. I think it's important to understand what MIDI is not. MIDI is not sound. MIDI is data, more specifically, note data. So if I play a note on my MIDI keyboard, it's going to send that information to whatever device it's plugged into, be it a laptop, iPad, or hardware synthesizer. There's also something called MIDI channels, which allows us to control different devices, 16 as the norm. So if you're not getting any sound from your synth when plugging it into your MIDI controller, chances are they're not on the same MIDI channel. You should refer to your device's manual to figure out how to change the MIDI channel. This varies by device. So this and this are technically doing the same thing. They're both sending note data. I prefer 5-pin because it allows me to work with hardware synthesizers and daisy chain if need be. I made a whole video about how to sync your synthesizer setup using MIDI, so check that out if you haven't already. Something special to know about USB MIDI though is that certain manufacturers have included the feature of sending audio through USB. This requires you to set the device as your main interface, which can be useful if you don't have an audio interface, but eventually you'll want to invest in an interface or mixer if you're planning on using hardware synthesizers. Besides the Mini Lab, my only other MIDI controller is the Keystep Pro right now, which is great, but sometimes I want something simpler, more compact. That's why I decided to get the Keystep 37, which should be here any day now. MIDI controllers come in all shapes and sizes. Some even have weighted keys and the price tag of a synthesizer. Synths normally only come in one size since they're a lot more intricate, aside from a few exceptions. On most MIDI controllers, you'll find knobs and pads that aren't tied to any specific function. Sometimes these get mapped automatically if you use compatible software. For example, the Arturia V collection maps automatically to the Arturia Mini Lab. So you don't have to map everything using your mouse as you would with the OnStock sounds in your DAW, which is nice, but still not as nice as having a designated knob for every function like you do on a synthesizer. But synthesizers can be limiting, and after a while, you might want to add a different sound to your palette, which means more money and further down the rabbit hole. MIDI controllers, on the other hand, can play any virtual instrument your little heart could ever desire, from classic synths to high-quality recordings of acoustic instruments, and they sound really good. VSTs can get expensive though, and before you know it, you've probably spent as much money as you would have on a hardware synthesizer. That being said, there's plenty of free VSTs out there, and even the stock ones in most dolls are fairly usable. There's no one standing out in a corner handing out free synths though. With MIDI controllers, you're also not tied to the keyboard layout. There's lots of funky MIDI controllers out there to spark creative ideas, so definitely do some research. Moving on to synthesizers. I actually didn't even know what a synthesizer was up until six years ago. I was seeing a physical therapist for a short time and found out he was into making music as well. We started talking about making music and he mentioned that he didn't use a computer to make music. I was like, what? What are you talking about? He was like, yeah, I've been doing it this way for like 20 years or so. I just used some synthesizers, a TR-909 and a mixer. 
keep in mind I didn't even know what a TR-909 was at the time so I'm just like taking all this information he's trying to explain to me like what a mixer does and I'm just like what is happening is this real is this possible you know like in my mind I'm like I've been making music on a laptop forever and then I stopped making music so like actually my conversation to him at the time was like telling him like you know music is something I used to do yeah I used to make music um, you know but I just haven't lately it just became something I used to do and then he started telling me about making music without a computer and like the main reason that I stopped making music was because like I was so tired of being on the computer all the time you know going to school on the computer working and being on the computer I didn't want to do it that way so when I heard that there was a different way I'm like yes feed me information please I went home that day and just started looking for things about synthesizers and anything that would get me closer to making music without a computer sadly there wasn't just one simple answer so I spent months doing research trying to figure out my setup trying to figure out what a mixer does what monitors do what everything does what is a synthesizer um, and this is kind of how we got here so thank you I think his name was Dean thank you so much you changed my life completely wherever you are so synthesizers make their own sounds synthesizers aren't dependent on anything else the sounds come from within there's analog synthesizers that make the sounds with analog circuitry and then there's digital synthesizers and FM synthesizers and wavetable synthesizers so many different types of synthesizers it's really overwhelming at first but I think something important to remember is that at the end of the day the synthesizer is still a keyboard and if you're not good at keys you're not gonna get very far so definitely focus on learning how to play keys as your main thing not just buying synthesizers please learn to play keys before you buy compulsively buy <laughs> compulsively take over your life. So do yourself a favor and invest some time on learning how to actually play keyboard before you just go out and start buying a bunch of synthesizers. So the cool thing about synthesizers is that not only can you use them with their internal sounds, but they're also a MIDI controller. Most of the time they have MIDI in and out. MIDI in allows it to be controlled from something else. So let's say for example, if I wanted to control the micro freak with regular keys instead of using the touch strip, all I have to do is get a MIDI controller, send MIDI out of that controller, into the synthesizer and then I can use the keyboard to control it. I can also use the MIDI out of that synthesizer and control something else. So I can use this cool touch play controller with another synthesizer. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. But with that great power comes great moolah because synthesizers can definitely get expensive, especially once you start dipping into the world of analog synthesizers. The battle between digital and analog has been going on forever, but you know, you just have to take both. Why not both? So the beautiful thing about synthesizers is that you don't need anything else to make music. It's literally a tiny piano with awesome sounds. A lot of synthesizers can be battery powered, but most of them do not have speakers. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. If you're talking about like old Casios, those normally have pretty good speakers. And actually speaking of old Casios, I think the old Casios are actually a great place to start when you're shopping for a first synthesizer because you can find them fairly cheap used sometimes at like thrift stores or online. People sometimes have them and they don't know what they have. So Sometimes you can find some very good deals on some very rare stuff so just keep an eye out they also sound really amazing for what it's worth and as you can see I have quite a collection of Casio's in the background so if you are gonna go with an old Casio you are sacrificing the MIDI controller capabilities of it you'll mostly benefit from old Casio's if you're a good keyboard player and don't need MIDI or if you're really gonna invest time into learning how to play keys it's a great grab-and-go synth Definitely check out some old Casios if it's something that you're getting into. So if you're thinking about using a MIDI controller to control your BSTs and you really want to focus on that, that's the way to go. If you're going to be recording more audio, I think synthesizers is really the way to go. I think audio is more permanent. MIDI does allow you to experiment and move notes around, quantize and do all these other cool things. But with audio, it's a lot more permanent. It really forces you to like get it right that first time. So like practice, 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 record get it right. And I feel like at the end that kind of pushes you more as a musician to like always improve. The way I like to think about it is that the better I get it the first time, the least editing I have to do post. That's it guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for all things music making and synthesizers. Love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.